Hello, friends. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Um, welcome to a maps stream. We're going to build a maps app. It's um, hopefully going to be pretty simple, but it's also going to be pretty fun. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Glad to have you here. Um, essentially, what we're going to build, and thank you for those bits, um, is a map. So we're going to have a map, and then we're going to make it so that in the Twitch chat, you'll be able to send a message like this. So check in. You can put your location. Thank you, one computer guy. Uh, and probably a message like, hello world, something like this. So the idea is you'll be able to send a message like this in the Twitch chat, and then uh, we'll geolocate that location, put a marker on the map with like a little message box, including your message. Yeah. Um, this was absolutely inspired by um, a, an app that um, I think Instafluff has built a, a similar app before. Shout out to Instafluff. Mr. Fluff himself. Um, and then also uh, when um, Fun Fun Function was streaming, he built a very similar thing. So we're going to build the same thing, but we're going to build it from scratch. So it'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't know we're gonna, what we're going to build it with yet. We'll vote on it when we get there. Um, I mean, we'll probably use Leaflet for maps because Leaflet uses OpenStreet Maps, which is free. Um, but, uh, yeah, and it's going to be the whole world. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm in Denver, Colorado, which is why I have that there. But you'll be able to check in anywhere in the world. That's the plan. All right. Um, I feel like Conan. So I'm actually just going to make a quick update to my overlay. Uh, because right now, if you were to try and drop a... Uh, an emote that's animated, like uh, coding dog jam, like this one. So this one's animated. You see it in the chat, it's moving. But on the screen, like when it drops, it's not using the animated version. So I want to fix that really quick. But also, we have a ton of supports. I appreciate you all. Um, thank you, Lord, for that host. The she boss with the five gifted, Nikki Poo with the resub, uh, Lunatica with the 100 bits, Callum with the 15 months. Risa, thank you very much, Callum. Nuki Poo with the gift to our, our bot here, Samwise Gardner. Uh, Submicron with the 10 months, FSET with the 8 months, uh, Straight Rogue with the 100 bits, One Computer Guy with the 8 months, and Ashley B. Thank you for the 5 months. <laughs> That's an unfortunate glitch. Yeah, I, I know that um, in some countries they don't support um, Twitch Prime for whatever reason, but yeah. Open layer? I've never heard of open layers. We'll have to take a look at it, but... Let's go. Let's just write some code. So, <laughs> um, if you're not familiar with it, um, there's this thing. It's the seedling drop game. Um, it's going to be a pretty. I did not mean to do that. Um, it's going to be a pretty quick fix because right now the seedling drop um, just pulls in from the old uh, t Twitch API URL when it parses an emote. Um, let's see though. How does this all work? Uh, you know what? We might have to modify some other code. We'll find it. We have to find the code that does the initial drop. Do, 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 do. Okay, do drop. And it passes in a URL. So who calls do drop? Here. Um, uh-huh. And then emojis is when we're parsing emotes out. Um, you know what? I think I might have to modify the back end code. Message dot message, split the message. Okay, never mind. We're not gonna do this. <laughs> it's gonna take too much code. <laughs> it was fun to look at that. We wrote that like years ago, year probably like a year ago. Thanks for being here, everybody. Um, what else we got? Why not use geolocation data from the navigator? Uh, we could. Well, um, you. The thing is, you'll be able to check in without going to a website. So, um, you you're just gonna send this message in the Twitch chat. Which is why I wouldn't do like uh, geolocate, get location or whatever. That's the main reason. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Welcome, everybody. 
<laughs> yeah. So the thing is, I'm I'm actually allowed to gift a free sub to my bot, um, but I never got around to doing it. So I need to do that whenever that sub expires. Um, what is my app switching app? Oh, it's called uh, Alt Tab. Um, about Alt Tab. It's uh, open source GPL license. You can find it on GitHub uh, for Mac. It's called Alt Tab. Cool. David Snyder, it's been a really long time. Thanks for being here. And thank you for that reason. 14 months. Wow. Uh, and uh, Danilo uh, DeConini. Danilo, thank you for that. That sub and Frinis. Thank you for the 100 bits. Much appreciated. So the, the sub alert sounds will only go off for like gifted subs and then like bits uh, over a certain amount. And thank you, Opti. Welcome, friends. Thank you for that raid. Opti is a good friend of the stream. You should definitely check them out. See what they were working on. Pew pew. Splitgate. Wait, what's Splitgate? Is that a game? <laughs> Welcome in, Raiders. We're just getting started. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the, the sub alert sound will happen if there's like a raid over a certain number of people and if there's a certain number of gift subs or if the bits are over a certain amount. Or if I think I did it so if, you're, if your resub is over... Actually, that's probably not the case. I was going to say if your resub is over 12 months, it'll play the sound. And the main reason I did that uh, is because the, the the notification sounds were getting really distracting. But I'm doing my best to come back over here and, and acknowledge everything at least a few minutes after it happens. Yeah. It's a new first-person shooter. Like, oh, oh, my partner is playing this. I know, I know exactly what game you're talking about. The only thing is I am horrible at first-person shooters. Never any good at Halo so I don't play. <laughs> but uh, Portal was fun. I used to play Portal a lot. But yeah, this game seems really cool if you hadn't he haven't heard of it. Splitgate. It's like Halo with portals. Uh, cool. Dang. Sorry to hear that, DS Legends. Yeah. My thoughts are with you. It's really unfortunate, but thanks for being here. Oh, happy birthday, the She-Boss. <laughs> nice. I'll have to sing you happy birthday, and then uh, and then we'll write some code. Hey, 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 what's up, nerd love? Thank you. Appreciate you. The thing is about having hair this long is that uh, it gets greasy really easy. At least it does for me. I don't know. Maybe I need to switch my shampoo or conditioner or something, but uh, it's a lot to manage. <laughs> I'm hoping to get it to a point where I can put it fully in a bun. It's just not quite there yet. Yeah. Uh, you will understand soon enough, sir. But basically, I am going... The, the map will be displayed on my stream. So, for example, when the stream is getting started, uh, right now we just see this, this little image, like when the stream is getting start, started. But the idea is, after we build this app... And thank you, Anonymous, <laughs> for those six gifted subs. Much appreciated. But after we build this app, we could put the map on this page. So, like, as the stream is getting started, people will be checking in, and then you'll see different dots popping up all over the map. That kind of thing. Um, cool. Legend. <laughs> All right. Why do front-end developers eat lunch alone? They can't join tables. <laughs> nice one, Veritatas. <laughs> I know you, you can't see. This is, I'm, I'm like a few minutes behind on chat. Uh, but that's that was a message from uh, Veritatas. I mean, I can join a table. I guess... I'm more of a full stack than a front end developer. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Tech Turner. So if you do USA, it'll probably put like a map, a, a dot in the center of the map, but we'll figure that out. We'll figure out like the best way to say your location. The struggles of it. <laughs> yeah, the thing is like on other types of Twitch streams, it's it's okay to get interrupted every now and then with like a notification sound because you're probably just playing a game or watching a video. Whereas on my stream, we're doing things that require serious concentration. I don't, I don't know. I'm not not to say that like gaming isn't hard or anything. But a lot of times we're like in the middle of writing code and then there's just a random sound. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I've noticed that when I watch people playing that split gate, split gate game, they don't use portals as much, but you can do some really interesting stuff, like blast a portal behind somebody and then take them out. Yeah. Full screen animated alerts. Yeah, like it goes to an entirely different scene. Yeah, exactly. Cool, 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 cool. All right, uh, let's sing happy birthday to the She-Boss because they're a longtime viewer. 
big supporter of the channel. Um, we'll sing happy birthday and then we'll we'll write some code. We'll we'll do like a minute of hellos after that as well. But just give me a second. It's kind of in tune. <clears throat> All right, is everybody ready? Get your uh, get your cat jams ready. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to the sheep boss. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. I do appreciate you. Thanks for being here. We all appreciate you. Can we get some hearts in the chat for uh, the she boss as well? Yeah, you're very welcome. Cool. Um, but yeah, there was a message from uh, David. It's low-key annoying how much of an interruption support notifications are on Instafluff stream. Hey. I like the thing is, Instafluff stream is just one big distraction. <laughs> A lot of the times, I'm actually okay with it, but um, but the thing, yeah, Instafluff, um, he has an entirely different scene for notifications and everything. But yeah, it is an interruption, but at the same time, I think it's part of the charm, but yeah. Um, and again, shout out to our good friend Instafluff. <laughs> Go watch him. <laughs> All right, um, let's, we'll do one minute of hellos. I'm going to say hello to as many people as possible, and then we'll get started on this app. Um, we are going to vote, so... If you're interested in swaying what we use to build this thing, uh, stick around because we're going to vote. You can choose from Vue, React, Svelte, or Vanilla. We're going to pick one and then we'll go from there. Um, but yes, yes, yes. Uh, in the chat, uh, you can say, hi, hello. <laughs> you you all know the drill. You've all been here before, most of you anyways. <laughs> you can say any one of these things. Hi, hello, hey, morning, afternoon, evening, howdy, good day. Coding, hi -oh. Or of Ohio, or Bogahe, say any of these things, I will acknowledge you. I will notice you. We're going to go back in time to 24 minutes ago when Alex Ender was the first person to say hello. What's up, Alex Ender? And hello, Sequel Gordster. What's up, uh, the She Boss and uh, Greenie? Hello, uh, Orhan and Toof and Mark Boots and Sky and Raisu and Depopom and uh, Amon and Tech Turner and Nikki Poo. Hello, Katana. What's up, Muli? Encoding is weird and Sound of Gaming and CFM and uh, Afzal and Nomani. Hello, uh, Merdad and Vishup or Vishup and Slake and Unlove Slug and Nolo and Nicholas and Spock and Daniel and Jay Philly Webb. How's it going? What's up, Max and uh, Allers and Cookify and Indie Monkey and Nerd Love? If Londa and Colloquial Al and the Omni King and Siraj and hello, uh, Rashik and Mihai and DS Legends uh, and Sir Hanser, 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 Hans. <laughs> What's up, Mills? And Sir Shadow, hello, Schwal, and Vinox, and Salant, and Dune Alive, uh, and Ben Halverson, hello, Mad Skelk Yar, and Adrian, and Ubi, and Martin Luck, and uh, Lunatica, and JNP, and Rogue Soul, and Uncle Ben, and Igor, hello, Adamit, and Midith, and Brumix, and Frinnas, and KKTTS, and uh, Veritatas, and Pano, and Dashian Zalopez, and J, <laughs> J Mad, and B Zvolinsky, and Chief Mustardo, and Opti, and Python Lover, and Vortex, and X Coding, and Lula Muyer, and Danilo Dakini, Danilo Dakini. Danilo, how's it going? What's up, Tim Sucks and One Computer Guy? Hello, Cake for Dogs. And uh, Punch a Bunch, what's up, Burn House and Sammy and Plexical and Glitch and Stefan and Skylar and Doc. What's up, Doc? And Zade and Fset and Rainy and the Oxty and the Unique and Pezdal and Reller and Prawin and Archivius and Earl George and Sir Davos and Addis and Tank and Tom and uh, Kushenstein and Marius and Breach and King Coding. Welcome, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> An attempt was made to pronounce. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce your names right. I was trying my best. But also, we got a lot of first timers. So shout out, shouts out to all the first timers. Welcome to the coding garden. Can we get some hearts in the chat? Um, coding heart. This one. Yeah, yeah. we've got uh, Sean and, and uh, Elks and JNP. Um, who else? Uh, Murdad and Afsal and Daniel and uh, Rashik. And Eurosnipe. Welcome. And Plasma and Cirque and Raidko and Steven and Skylar and Cake for Dogs. 
Uh, it's some Cody and Breach and Mr. Punch a Bunch, <laughs> Sammy and Tony. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you. Cool. Well, and thank you, uh, Adamet. I try my best. I try to spread uh, positive vibes, I guess. <laughs> Try to try to welcome people in because that's the thing you could be sitting at home alone right now and you don't you don't have anybody to talk to Maybe you're working from home and the people aren't that sociable at your work But you got us the coding garden you got us you can, and at least for the next couple hours you can uh, you can hang out with us Because <laughs> because uh, you're our friend I was, I was gonna say pretend you have friends. No, you're our friend. You're our friend and thank you for being here um, All right Let's do a vote. So uh, for those of you that are just dropping in, the thing that we're going to build is a check-in map. So we're going to build a map where you can send a Twitch chat message like this. Um, check in your location and then some message. I will then put, that lo put a dot on the map at that location and show a little uh, dialogue with the message that you sent. Um, and this map that we're building, we're going to use probably like as the getting started stream uh, screen or something like that. We're, we're going to use web dev. Yeah, so we're not, we're not going to do like native or anything like that. Um, yeah, and that's good to hear, Orhan. But you are. I appreciate you all for being here. I mean, it, it like the thing is, it like it even helps me when I start streaming because a lot of times I'm tired or I like have so many other things to do, so I'm kind of like dreading streaming, but then I get here and everyone's so happy to be here and uh, I appreciate you all. So th thank you for, for being here. All right, let's do a poll. Um, what to use? So your choices are Vue, React, Svelte, Vanilla. Um, anything else? Earth.google.com. <laughs> Wait, is that like the 3D ones? Uh, like the 3D map? I don't think we'll use Xamarin because Xamarin, um, anything but React. Uh, the thing is, if we, here, Angular 1. <laughs> so I won't use Angular, what is it? Where are we at? Angular 8 now? But you can vote for Angular 1. I'll use that. Uh, we'll make this a two minute vote. Vote now. I've programmed in C. Yeah, I got a computer science degree, so we did C back then. Um, hey, hey, no worries, Merhad, think, uh, or, or Merdad. Thank you for being here. Monetary support is not at all required. I, just just being here helps, and I appreciate it. Um, oh, you moved to a MacBook. Nice to hear, Mr. Demon Wolf. Nice. It's nice. <laughs> there's, there's a ton. Yeah, people were saying, yeah, there was... <sighs> If we go with React, we potentially could go with Next. I mean, I want to keep it pretty simple, though. I guess Next would make it simple. And we technically could do a static build. Yeah, uh, maybe we'll do this Indie Monkey. Like, how, how about this as a comment? I mean, it looks like React is going to win. You still have a minute left. You have a minute to sway the vote if you don't want React to win. But we could, like, do React with Vite, because I haven't tried that before. I almost always use create react app. So I think react, whatever we choose, we'll try to use Vite. Vite, and if you haven't heard of it, um, it's this, it's the next generation front end tooling. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll just use JavaScript. Actually, I'll let you vote on it, but in the vote, choose JavaScript. Um, mainly like TypeScript is fine. It's just when I'm trying to get things done fairly quickly, um, it's not as possible because uh, it's, it's very cumbersome. You have to define all your types. Um, so yeah. Have I seen Vitessa? I don't think I have. Let's see what it is. Opinionated Vit starter template. Oh, it's got 2.2 thousand stars. Um, cool. So it's a Vit starter template for Vue. Seems fun. Here's the <laughs> React is popular. <laughs> Vanilla Sudoku. Yes, we just we just write what it would be. We don't write the actual code. Uh, and thanks again to Anonymous earlier with those. Was it six gifted? Much appreciated. Alexander, thank you for the sub. Uh, Saverix, thank you for the prime. And uh, Tomato Juice, thank you for the the two month reset. 
<laughs> the vote was diluted. I mean, the thing is, like, you you all know that I'm not the biggest fan of React. So if you were really a fan of me, you would have voted for something else. No, but it's fine. We'll use React. Um, we're going to use React and Vite. And then um, I was trying to think, like, should we even vote on a maps library? Like, there, there are a lot of options, um, f a lot of options for maps. Um, OpenStreetMaps, if you haven't heard of it, is one of the, one of the easiest because it's it's uh, not easiest. The f it's one of the freest because it is it is open. Like they take uh, contributions just like Wikipedia, and you can incorporate these maps using a library like Leaflet um, into your app. Totally free. You don't need an API key or anything like that. Yeah. So if we use like Mapbox, we would have to sign up for an API key. If we use Google Maps, we'd need an API key. Um, I actually have never used. Um, uh, Apple Maps, but I was looking and um, DuckDuckGo actually uses Apple Maps as its default map. Yeah, yeah. So, like, Apple Maps is technically an option. Technically. <laughs> um, let's do a vote. We'll do a vote, but just know that I might actually override the vote depending on where it lands. Um, poll. And just know if so if we choose anything besides leaflet, it's going to take a little bit longer because I've, I'm going to have to get an API key. I'm going to have to read about their. I'm going to read their. Have to read their docs. I'm going to have to find a library that potentially is compatible with React. So keep that in mind when you vote. Uh, Apple Maps, leaflet, Google, uh, Map Box. Was there another one? That these are our options. Yeah. And like I don't want to I don't like <laughs> in general develop developing takes time. You know, you got to read the docs, got to sign up for API keys. So, like, it's fine if we choose something else, but I just feel uh wait, did it did it start? What just happened? Did I click the wrong button? Do you all see a poll? <laughs> You all see a poll? What just happened? Didn't I click start? Nope. Okay. Boomer, come on. <laughs> Apple Maps, Google Maps, uh, we'll do like leaflet slash open street maps, um, map box. Okay. Start poll. A poll is already active. That's a bug. <laughs> um, does anybody know? Is it like slash polls like this? Coding Garden slash polls? Poll? Does anybody know the URL? I guess I could probably find it on my dashboard. It's showing up now. For some people, I mean, I don't see it. Give me a second. Let me, let me see what's going on here. <laughs> Leaflet one. <laughs> All right, it's I can find the I'll prove it if Leaflet did one I'll, I'll I can prove it to you because I think my dashboard can show the polls. Oh, I think just refresh your chat. Yeah, yeah. If you refresh your chat, you'll see it. Here's the thing: <laughs> there's only. <laughs> Uh, eight vote, ten votes, uh, nine vote. There's only nine votes, so we're we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do we're gonna do it again. Uh, redo. Okay, here we go. Google Maps, Apple Maps, uh, Leaflet slash uh, Open Street Maps. Um. Or map box. <laughs> Go. Okay, cool. You sh you should see this one now. Uh, yeah, map box is a is a thing. It's actually really nice. So, a few years ago, Google Google Maps was actually really easy to integrate. You didn't need uh, an API key. Um, you could just like add it to your page very easily. But more recently, like within the last couple of years, Google Maps 
started requiring that you have an account with a credit card on it so that they could eventually bill you. And it got harder to use. Mapbox is pretty easy to integrate. Um, you can create an API key without a credit card. Um, it's pretty awesome. And the if you look at the maps themselves, they look they look pretty nice. Whoa, they have a whole navigation SDK? That's awesome. They also have map. I, mean, I feel like I'm being a salesman. I'm not, I'm not sponsored, and I'm not trying to sway you toward map. But good, good. I didn't sway you towards it. Um, but it, it's pretty cool. So for for a paid map platform, I think it it replaces what like what Google Maps used to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. And Leaflet one, which is fine. But just know that there there are options out there. Um, but what what's nice about Leaflet um is they have a react library they have a view library you could also use it without react view they just have like a straight up javascript library and then behind the scenes it you just point it at a tile layer so in the code uh, let's take a quick stretch yeah so what, what this is going to be a uh, piku is basically at the beginning of the stream people can check in to say like i'm at this location and like send a message like hello and it'll drop a map drop a dot on the map at that location um, but you can see whenever you're setting up leaflet, you specify the tile layer and we're pointing it at OpenStreetMap with this specific type of URL. So the Z, X, and the Y will relate to like coordinates and the, and the specific tile that's going to be brought in. But you technically could host your own tiles and use those with leaflet. But it's nice that um, OpenStreetMap uh, provides a tile server that you can just throw in there. And that's what we're going to do because it's kind of like the easiest thing to add. So this is it. We're going to use Leaflet. But there's also a React Leaflet, um, which is a wrapper on top of it so that we um, we can use it in our React app and we, we get access to these little components. So we can do things like a map container, a tile layer, a marker, a pop-up. Um, because Leaflet itself is very, very JavaScript-y and like does DOM stuff. So by using React Leaflet, we can take advantage of components and state and stuff like that. Okay, so that's what that's what we're gonna do. Um, we've decided we're gonna use React and uh, React Leaflet, and we also decided that we're gonna use uh, Vite, which is a build tool. So let's try to get started. We need to scaffold a Vite project, and we want it to be React, like this. So I should be able to do npm init Vite at latest. Wait, what version of npm am I using? Um, Seven. Okay, so I need to do it like this. Um, so we're gonna init an app. We're gonna tell it, give it the name. Um, let's just call it map. And then we're gonna use the React template. Here we go. Yes, I agree. Let's see how long it takes. Done! <laughs> okay, uh, and then let's see how long it takes to install uh, dependencies. Blazing fast. My goodness. Okay, and then now if we do npm run dev, we have a dev server running on port 3000. Fastest React app ever. Okay, I'm, I'm a fan of Vite. <laughs> the, the, one of the main ideas with Vite um, is it's supposed to be, not only is it blazing fast for generation, um, it's, it's blazing fast for development as well. Because it, um, I think like if we look at the source code here, yeah, it's like, it's saying script type module and then like it's using browser features. So instead of having to like bundle everything with Webpack, um, it uses browser features to just do the bundling in the browser because browsers support modules these days. So that's awesome. All right, we're on our way, everybody. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. So Doc has a Vite uses ES build slash rollup. It'll be even faster once pure ES build is viable for real bundles. Yeah. And so ES build is a, is a library um, similar to something like Webpack. But thank you, Pablo, for the bits. Yeah, we got a few supports. Um, Weatherbox, uh, Weatherboxer. Thank you for that two month resub. Pablo with the twelve months who says one wholesome year with the coding garden. Thanks for everything. P.S. Spring sent me a replacement shirt. Thanks for all that. Nice. Glad to hear it. Yeah. Um, 
we had it's the, this shirt. We had a campaign a few months ago where I was selling this shirt, and uh, Pablo had an issue. Yeah, but thank you, <laughs> thank you for the bits, and I'm glad you're going to get your T-shirt, Pablo. Okay, um, I might have missed some messages. If I miss your message, feel free to send it again. Uh, so here, here, here's a here's a life hack for watching Coding Garden. If at any time you see that the chat isn't scrolling, now's your time to say a message that I will actually see. But now that I've said that, everybody's just gonna <laughs> start sending messages. What's up, Katoli? Yeah, um, you can see all the maps we can use. Let's see. Oh, they have uh, they have like different types of maps. I like this one. Look at that one. <laughs> uh, this one's cool. So this is awesome, yeah. And this gives you the, the code that you need. You basically are just specifying a different tile layer. But it looks like these tile layers are coming from various servers. Like this is coming from Thunder Forest. And then this one's coming from Stadia Maps. This one's coming from Jog. Ooh, it's dark. I like this one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with this one. Thanks thanks for that link. Who was that? American 2050? Much appreciated. Okay, so uh, we have ourselves um, a React app. If we look in here, here it is. Um, we've got a Vite config, which will do some automatic refreshing. Um, we have an index file, which brings in our main JSX file. And if we look in the source directory, we've got our main entry point. That brings in some CSS and these other things. And then it brings in the app component, which is here. It's got a bunch of stuff. So before we install the like React leaflet dependency, um, let's let's clean this up. Let's get rid of all the stuff that we don't need. Um, like this React logo. I'm going to delete it. Um, and then we don't need that in here. Um, I'm not going to bring in the CSS. We're going to get rid of the state variable and get rid of everything in the component except for a nice little H1 that says hello world. Like that. Okay. And then uh, we'll get rid of this CSS. And I'm not sure what this favicon is doing. Oh, it's the actual icon. That's fine. Okay. It's a favicon. <laughs> I mean, I was curious why the favicon was in the source directory, but that's really interesting that they're um, they're linking the favicon from the source directory in here. But I'm sure whenever you build it, it like puts it into the right folder or whatever. Okay. Um, if you can hear some weird noises, my dog and partner upstairs. Uh, making a lot of noise. So. Uh, okay, so we've got it. We've got a nice little uh, hello world. We're good. Um, let us install React Leaflet. Um, sure, the dog. <laughs> uh, so this is all we should we should need to do. Yeah. So we need the the base Leaflet dependency, and then we'll also need React Leaflet, which is going to let us add the map. So let's do it. <clears throat> I'm going to kill the build. We're going to install uh, Leaflet. And React Leaflet. Yeah, we've made some progress. We're 45 minutes into the stream and we have a hello world, so that's good. And thank you, John, for that focus. Let's go ahead and we'll do uh, eight minutes of focus just where I'll um, get everything set up and then uh, and then we'll com come back from there. Does my focus mode even work? It does. Look at that. So focus mode makes it hard for me to read the chat so we can actually get some, get some work done. So... Here's the plan for the next eight minutes. We want a map. We want this style of map. And that's about it. That's probably all we need. Um, okay, so let's go. Follow the steps from the installation page and then copy paste this code. <laughs> um, so we're just gonna put this all in the in the app component here. Um, that'll go here. But uh, right now, I don't have a linter installed, but these variables do not exist, like map container, tile layer, marker pop-up. Those, those don't exist. We need to actually bring those in. So those are going to come from uh, React Leaflet, or they should anyways. 
Um, so I should be able to bring in the map container. Yeah, that one. And we need the tile layer. Mm -hmm. And we need a marker. Mm -hmm. And we need a pop-up. Mm -hmm. Great. So at that point, um, we should get a map on the page. We'll just have to work on the styling. Um, and I, I need to change the port because I have, I have um, other things running on port 3000. So let me... Let's see if I can figure out how to change the port in the Vite config. I can't. We're going to go to the docs. Server.port. Cool. So I should be able to do something like this. Port 9834. And then if we start it back up, 9834. Beautiful. And if we go there, we've got ourselves a map. <laughs> you can see that. Uh, some of the tiles are missing. Um, I think they have the URL wrong. This is jank. This is really jank. But let's try to use this tile layer instead. Oh, wait. That, that one uses an access token. We need one that doesn't have an access token. So what about... This one? All right, so let's try to use that URL. Um, they're specifying the tile layer here. Like that. ZYXR. Did I save it? I saved it. Refresh it. Something ain't right. <laughs> like, it really is really having a hard time loading these tiles. Um, just real quick, I'm going to load this in Google Chrome and see if, uh, see, <laughs> see if we have a better time. Um, oh, you're right. I do need the styles. Okay. Okay. You're totally right. I need to... I'll bring in the styles. Let's bring in the styles. That should fix it. Um, where did my leaflet docs go? Yeah, OK. Um, though here's the thing. Let, let's look at their getting started. Let's see if I followed all the steps. Because did they tell me to bring in the CSS? Like, all right, import that. Great. Um, add the following and see if it displays correctly. See, I, I see it now. It says make sure Leaflet CSS is loaded, but that should have been that should have been here, right? Right? Okay. Um, but to do that, we'll actually go to the main file, main.jsx, and um, We'll import it here. So import uh, leaflet slash dist slash something. I need to find where that CSS file is. Um, leaflet dist slash leaflet.css. That's what I need. All right, that's the winner. Yeah, and then I need to work on my sp my style. So I want this to be a full screen map. Um, so here's what we'll do. We'll say uh, in our index.css, we want our body element to have uh, a width of 100 view width and a height of 100 view height. Um, and then we want our uh, root element to take up 100% of that. So we'll say width. 100% and then uh, height 100% we'll also specify yeah so it has no margin that should be alright um, let's do a 
A quick little reset here though. So we'll say everything has no margin and it has a box sizing of border box. That should, should prevent like weird sizing issues. Um, and we'll also say overflow hidden here. So the, the body element's gonna take up the whole page with no scroll bars. The root element is right below the body which should take up 100%. And then we'll create an app element um, which takes up 100% of the root because this right here, this div, um, will be right inside the root and then we should have a full screen map. All right, so there's our root, there's our app, there's our leaflet div, Nothing's happening. <laughs> um, what else do we need? So make sure all dependencies are installed and you're using supported versions. Uh, make sure leaflet CSS is, CSS is loaded. Make sure your map container has a defined height. Okay, so I actually need to put like a class on this as well. Um, yeah, class name, we'll call it map. And it too will have 100%, 100%. There we go. <laughs> we've done it. With a minute to spare, we've done it. All right, so we, we now we've got this beautiful map. It's full screen. Um, it should likely, yeah, so it, it resizes, which is good. Because the idea is when we, whenever we make this an overlay, we'll, we'll, we'll define the size, and it, it should take up that, that whole section. Okay. Nice <laughs> job. <laughs> yeah, I'll do a quick recap of everything we had to do to, to get it there, but, uh, but we've done it. Okay. Um, I guess the other thing is, let's start it off at a different zoom level. So if we look at where we're bringing it in, um, it has a center, and apparently that center is on London, and a zoom level of 13. But if we go to like a zoom level of 4, let's see what we get. We don't get auto-refresh, like auto-reloading, which I'm not a fan of. Um, I wonder if there's some other settings that we need to, uh, need to pass in here, because you'll notice I, I, I saved the file. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, focus mode is over. Um, yeah, I saved the file, but it requires that I refresh to get that, which I don't like. <laughs> Doc says the marker, check in works. The marker is right by Doc's house. Nice. Okay. Uh, and also, so I'm trying to scroll with my, my scroll wheel, but that's turned off. I'm just going to remove that prop so that way I can, um, Zoom in. Yeah, uh, let's figure out re like this React refresh thing because I need it to refresh when I save my file. Like that, just like uh, Lunar is saying, that's kind of a no go. That's a that's a a uh, a developer feature that you really want. Um, So in the commits, it looks like they've migrated React Refresh from the core V repo. How do I go about finding these libraries? Uh, uh, Twitch chat. <laughs> A lot of people are like, have you tried this? Have you tried that? Um, I think I tried V once before and I ran into some issues. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep using it, but I really, I really wanna fix this. Um, define the includes. Yeah, well, let's try that. So that's what they have uh, here. But I would think it has that by default, right? So React Refresh takes an object which has an include property, and then we want it to include all JSX files. Well, I guess... That could work because we could point Nodemon at Vite and then Nodemon would restart Vite. But I, the thing is, I don't want to have to restart the entire uh, build process. It needs to just be like a live reload or a live refresh. Okay, so it's running. Let's change a thing. 
We'll change the zoom level to three. And it didn't refresh. <laughs> Uh, what's wrong with Greenland? Uh, it's it's icy, <laughs> so Greenland is has is has snow. I think that's why it's why it looks like that. You're asking why it has this name, Kalalit Nunat. Is that how you say Greenland in uh, <laughs> in Greenland? <laughs> Include all files. Refresh or anything? Yeah, let's try it. Star star slash star. Um anything oh no it's not complete at this point we literally only have a map um it's not working <laughs> in greenlandian that's what it, that's what it is yeah yeah oh well I'll just have to manually refresh. I, I'm at, in any other stream. I would have just scrapped Vite at this point, but I don't want to do that. Um, all right, here's what I want to do. I'm going to grab this uh, dark color here, and I'm going to set that as the background. Wait, will that work? Let me try setting that as the background color of the map. So right here, if we say uh, background color, is that? Yeah. It doesn't quite look the same though. Yeah, so that's one D, this is one F. It's fine, it's close enough, <laughs> it's close enough. Uh, wait, where did the, wasn't there supposed to be a point on London? Yeah, it's there, okay. Weird, all right. Uh, where are we at? We have a map. At this point, um, we need to start adding some markers in other places. Um, and actually, does this have a pop-up? Yeah, look at that. I can click on it, and we see the text inside of it. Um, does the pop-up have, like, an open prop? Or, like, is open? I want to look at the docs, and I, wa I want the message to be displayed. Because the idea is, once people start checking in, we want the, the dot to be added and the message box to be be popped up there. Uh, so we're going to go to the leaf react leaflet docs. We're going to look at, um, pop-ups. How do I find the pop-up component? Map, okay, here it is. So we have map container, child components, pop up, here it is. Um, attribution, children, event handlers, on close, on open, position. I think we might want a tooltip, yeah, yeah, uh, because tooltips are just always open, whereas a pop-up is click to open. Let's try do using a tooltip instead. Yeah, and then it's it shows up on hover. But is there a way to just keep it open? Huh. That's really unfortunate. Looks like hot reloading has changed again. Let's check it out. Oh, so I have to use this one instead? That's really weird that it didn't come with that. Two hours ago, so they they haven't changed the boilerplate because this was added two hours ago. All right, we're um we're moving at the speed of JavaScript. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna uninstall this plugin React Refresh, 
And then I'm going to install uh, this plugin React. Hot fix. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on NPM yet. No! You know what we could do? We could steal that name on NPM right now. <sighs> do it. No, I don't. No, 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 we shouldn't do it. I mean, okay. How are they saying we should we should fix this? Does not work with class components, only functional components. Well, I am using functional components. Uh, yeah, I might do the npm install from a git URL. Okay. Does this say main? Does it have a main in here? Dist. But dist isn't in here, though. Is that how that works? Is that is that gonna give me a um is that gonna give me a dependency? Yeah, I think the thing is so yeah, because the the package.json the main points to dist, but I don't necessarily have to point to dist. I could actually just point to this and it should transpile it for me. Actually, I, I don't think anybody can publish it because they 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 own the VJS namespace. Um, so what? <laughs> Permanent. Thank you, Banana Crazy. We'll we'll do that. Okay, we're just gonna go back to this. Um, that's back. I didn't remove it. Let's forget about it. Um, just restart it. Cool. And then um, what we just learned, thanks to Banana Crazy, is the tooltip has a permanent prop, which will make it always appear. So Nodemon is typically, I mean, you could use Nodemon, but to me, that I don't. I, to me, that would re I don't want to do that because that would restart the entire Vite process, which is not what we want. We don't want to restart the Vite process. We want the page to just refresh and reload the dependencies. Um, and like I said, I'm okay with it. We're not going to worry. I'm not going to worry about auto refresh anymore. Um, cool. So that works. So now the pop up, the text is there. I imagine this. Two hours from now, we're going to have a map with dots everywhere and people's little messages and icons next to them. It's going to be great. Um, let's increase the font size. Um, where? Where is that little... Um, That little box. Unless is this a this can't be this isn't a canvas, is it? Same CSS as the body. Let's try it. So if right here, if I just do like uh, font size, ten rim. Whoa, oh, okay, <laughs> that definitely worked. Um, cool. The only issue with that though is uh, okay. It's not bad. I like it. Okay. Um, what do we do now? Let's integrate Twitch chat at this point because I think we're there because this is kind of what we need. I think also um, for the marker, do they have, can you specify like a custom URL? Like an image? Let's look at the marker docs. Um, icon, which takes an instance of leaflet.icon. Yeah, we'll create a custom icon. So let's look at the leaflet reference. Um, and then we need to create an icon like this. So import uh, L from leaflet. Why wouldn't I just call that leaflet? 
we're gonna call that leaflet. Um, we'll create an icon. That's this. We need to give it a URL. What happens if we don't specify any of this? What if I just want to give it a URL? Like my avatar. How do I find my avatar? <laughs> this. Oh, you're right. Yeah, this needs to be leaflet.icon. Okay. Uh, Twitch.tv slash coding garden. Um, I want to get this image here. That good enough. I just want to see if it'll load it. Because if I if I put that URL there, and then we specify the icon on the marker here, like that. Let's see what we get. Hey, not bad. <laughs> Backseat coders, yeah. I mean, that's the point of the stream, and uh, you all keep me honest. Because if I if I wouldn't have wouldn't have fixed that, it wouldn't have worked. So, but uh, so at this point, yeah, we could probably set the size. So in this case, it's seventy by seventy. Um, I guess the issue there is the the pop up is like pointing at the center of the icon. Oh, we have a pop-up anchor. Look at that. What if we do a zero, zero? Negative 70, negative 70. It's not working. <laughs> um, oh, I don't think it's, it's, I'm just really good at doing command R. It's not actually refreshing. Oh, you're right, because that's tooltip. Let's just change this. To, does pop-up have a permanent feature? Should be half. Okay. So, uh, 35-35. See, it, it's not refreshing, and then I'll refresh. Yeah. What if I want it to be like right there? That's where I want it. Um, does this have like a tooltip anchor? And then if we change this back to a 50-50, <laughs> that, that was funny to me. If we change this back to a tooltip. Uh, unexpected token. What? Oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. No, that doesn't work. Okay. Tooltip anchor exists. Um, oh, you're right. We just have to mess. Yeah, we just have to mess with the, the placement here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're totally right. Because it before it was pointing at the center. Um, can we, so right now, the tooltip has the arrow pointing to the right. Can we specify the location that it points? If we look at a tooltip here. Uh, position. Let's look at it on, on leaflet. Direction. Okay, here we go. Um, the values are right, left, top, bottom, center. I guess we do want it to be auto, and I think it's, is it auto by, it is auto. Uh, let's just move it. So we'll do um, negative 70, zero, and then we'll be off to the left. Nope. <laughs> uh, that moved it up and down. Um, so I actually want that one zero, and I want that one negative 70. Here we go. We'll get it. We'll get, there it is. 
Um, yeah, well, it actually had to be 35 zero um, <laughs> instead of negative 35. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's that's cool. And I think like um, if we had a marker over here because it's auto, it would actually, would it appear on the right though? Yeah, it, it, uh, that's exactly a ver, a ver, Vertufison. Uh, it is where the viewers are from. Okay, at this point, I think we have everything we need. Um, actually, like if I do this and then go back to it. A second ago, it went to the right-hand side for some reason. But regardless, at this point, we have all the code we need. Now we need to start getting Twitch chats, and then we'll be putting we'll put markers on the map. Uh, so for that, we are going to use... Um, TMI JS JavaScript package for Twitch chat maintained by our good friend Alka. <laughs> Check out Alka. He streams every now and then. Um, but he maintains this library, and all we got to do is install it, and then we can connect and then listen for Twitch chats. And this is just going to be a, like a read-only connection. We're not going to be sending any messages in the chat. We just want to see the messages from chat. So let's do it. Cool. Then over here, uh, we'll need to bring it in, create a client, connect, and then listen for messages. Um, we're in React, so the code isn't going to go here. The code needs to go within our component, needs to adhere to the component lifecycle, but we'll we'll figure that out. So um, we'll import a TMI instead of this require, like that. Awesome. Uh, we can create ourselves a client. In this case, we're just going to look at the coding garden channel. Should be simple enough. Um, then we'll need to connect the client and listen for messages. But we're going to do that inside of our React component. Um, and for that, we need an effect. So here's the idea. Um, when the component mounts, and this is our app component, so it's our only component, when it mounts, we want to connect to the Twitch chat and start listening for messages. So for that, we'll have a use effect where I can put my code inside this function and I tell it that it has no dependencies, meaning this function will run only once. And so this code, in turn, will run only once. Connect to Twitch chat, and then listen for messages. That's what this does here. Um, so that should do it. We should be connected to Twitch chat now, or not. Module stream has been externalized for browser compatibility and cannot be accessed in client code. So Romaro, thank you very much for that raid. <laughs> um, oh yeah, we can, we can disconnect on unmount. Thank you for the raid. Welcome raiders. Um, here's the issue. So TMI technically works inside of Node.js, but by requiring it in, in this way, it doesn't know that I'm running in a browser. So we might have to get a little bit hacky with it. Um, I guess I could also just install stream. There's I know that there is a there's a stream that makes that's compatible with web browsers. Yeah, this one. Um let's do it. If this doesn't work, then we'll just pull in the, the browser build. But that installs it, and so then when, behind the scenes, when TMI.js requ uh, TMI requires it in, yeah, no, it, it, we're, it's not going to work, because you, it, now it's looking for global, so TMI.js really, really thinks that it's inside of Node.js, um, and it's not. Um, so <laughs> we'll fix that. I'm not sure what what Alka does, but if you look on if you look on GitHub, there is a no. I mean, Alka's technically fixed it because this minified version right here is a browser build. This will work in the web browser. Um, I'm curious though. 
Um, what did he have to do to get that? Oh, uh, Comfy JS is built on top of TMI. That's why. And Comfy is really good. I guess, I mean, it, it might be a good use case for this because Comfy um, has like built in command handlers and stuff like that. I don't know. I just like to use Alka's library <laughs> and give him a shout out every time I use it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to download this JS file and put it into the directory. Um, just like the olden times. Welcome, Kylo. Thanks for being here. Um, all right. I don't know if it provides an export. I'm just going to put it in the source directory. We'll see what happens. Okay, so at this point, I have downloaded uh, tmi.min.js. I think maybe I can import it. Let's see, Callum. Does this tell us how to configure it for the browser? Oh, there's a CDN I can pull in. I see. Git CDN. Is this still a website? Okay, regardless. Um, I'm going to try to import it from this file. Let's see if this works. Import not found. That's fine. So <laughs> we'll get there. But uh, what we ha what we need to do now is just add a script tag that references it. So source slash TMI, and then that just adds uh, TMI to the global to the window global namespace. And then we don't need an import at all, um, and it will just work. Yeah, it just works. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> if you send some messages in the chat, we should see them in the console. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Whew. Yo, that's hacking, but it works. <laughs> it works well enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, wor it works well enough. Okay, so now we need to start parsing some messages. Uh, the initial idea was uh, your message will look like this. So exclamation mark check-in, followed by a location, followed by your message. Um, so let's handle that. Because right now we're just logging all the messages out. We don't want that. So we want to say um, our args are going to be the message split on spaces. So take the message that they just sent, split it on spaces, and then the command is going to be the first argument, and then everything else um, is going to be the rest of the arguments. So we'll do it like this. So this says split it on spaces, take the first thing, put it into command, take the rest, put it into the arguments. Um, and then we'll say if the command is equal to check in, then we'll do some further parsing. So uh, the location, um, I guess, I mean, to make it, here's, here's where things get tricky, right? Because if, if I say Colorado, USA, technically it's separated by space. It's just like doc just said. <laughs> so, you know what? We're just going to keep it to a country. We'll just keep it to whatever cut, like you, I mean, it can be, it can be a location, I guess technically we could parse it with double quotes. You're right, some countries do have spaces. How about you do this? How about you say dash dash location and then you can put whatever you want. And then when we come across dash dash message, 
<laughs> you can put whatever you want as well. Um, and then we'll have to parse that out. Is that too cumbersome? Separate the message from the location with a colon. That's a great idea, Doc. That makes it even easier. Yeah, I like that. So you can so at this point you can put any message you want. You just I mean at, but you can't have colons in the <laughs> in the location. Um Disney World Florida. Hi mom. Yeah, we're just going to do this. We're just going to do this. Are there any countries with a colon in their name? There can't be, right? Uh, we're going to go with this. <laughs> That's how we're going to do it. Um, Rome? Can anyone think of a country that has uh, a <laughs> USA? Now you're just messing with me. Okay. So um, we could do this. Join those back together on a space. Disneyland, colon, the happiest place on earth. <laughs> I, I I think we're good then. An acid spark with the 17 months. Thank you very much. Do we have some other supports? Yeah, we did. Much appreciated. Uh, JNSPVSC. Thank you for the 38 bits. DS Legends, thank you for the 11 months. PJ Keller with the 14 months. Felix with the sub. Soromaro with the sub. Tadius with the sub. Or no, with the host. Thank you, Tadius. Uh, Kylo with the prime sub. Swift Slayer with the prime sub. And acid spark with the 17 months. Thank you all for the support. Sorry it took me so long to acknowledge it. Um, there are no countries within with a colon. Okay, so we'll say the uh, location and message is going to be the parts split on uh, a colon. Okay, then to do get lat long for this location. Um, and then we need to add a marker to the map with this message. Um, so we're gonna need some more state or some, yeah, some state. We don't have any state right now because in our example map, we just had one single marker there. But what we need is an array of uh, locations, uh, check-ins basically. And then we'll iterate over that and put a marker for each one. If the message contains colons too, just don't put colons in your message. <laughs> don't put colons in your message. Okay, so um, for that we're gonna need some state. So we'll we'll call it like check-ins. Um, and that starts off as an empty array. So there are no check-ins. And then whenever. Uh, we have a new check-in. We need to put it into the array. So we'll say uh, set check-ins with all of the current check-ins. So we'll call this the previous value. And we want an array that has all the previous check-ins inside of it with a brand new check-in, which is the one that we're doing here. So the check-in will have a message, um, and it will have a location, and then eventually we're gonna need uh, like the user's icon URL. We'll have to get that from the Twitch API. Um, and also we need to geocode it. But for now, we're just gonna put all the dots on the same place. Um, so that's that should be fine. That puts it into the array. And then now we can take this array of check-ins um, and iterate over it right here. So there'll be a marker for each check-in. So we can say check-ins.map. That gives us a check-in. Um, for that check-in, we want a marker. For now, they're all just gonna be in the same position, but we're gonna put a custom message here. So this will be the check-in.message. Um, and we do need a key here. We'll do checkin.id. Um, and I think TMIJS gives us an ID on the tags here. Let's see. But we could probably do 
Might be like message ID or something like that. Let's see. Um, yeah, it does have an ID, so that should be fine. Uh, but you can try it in the chat now. Just do exclamation mark check in some location colon your message. First one to do it will pop up on the map. Hey, does this even work? <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, your yeah, and you see that it's actually piling them on top of each other. We'll need to fix that. Um. Yeah, I, I think we'll also need like a queue. So instead of just immediately putting it onto the map, um, too many tool tips. Um, we will um, have a queue of the latest messages. <laughs> um, it's unfortunate that it doesn't word wrap. I guess we could have like a max length. Yeah. We'll do a max length. Uh, We want like a substring. Zero uh, max length of 140 characters. Something like that. Yeah, and then there will only be one check in per username. Um, is 140 a lot? It's like a tweet. You can bas you're basically sending a tweet. Um, before we go any further, let's geolocate these. So I basically want to call an API with whatever location they've entered in. So if we look, if we look at the actual chat, let's see, like, yeah, so uh, Izmir, Turkey, um, or uh, Guardia, Algeria, or Oregon, USA, or uh, Valladolid, Spain, or Albany, New York. We, we want to take the piece that's before the colon and turn it into a latitude longitude. Oh yeah, that is true. I I don't think tweets should be 280 characters. I think that's a that's a mistake. They used to be 140. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna so we're gonna geolocate this now. I know that OpenStreetMaps has a geolocation API. It's called like it starts with an M. Um. Does anybody know what it's called? That's it. Nomenatim. No, nomenatim? Thank you, Scrippy Data. Um, is used as one of the sources for the search box on the OpenStreetMap homepage. So, for instance, if I search for Montana... These list of results here are coming back from that API. Um, and we'll just grab the first result. Can you use something like um, and format equals JSON? No. There's a way to do it. I just need to figure it out. Well, let's see. Does this call it? Read the docs. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so I want to search. Format equals JSON v2. So we have a query, Montana, limit one. And then that just gives us the lat long. This should be good. This should be good. It does give us an array. So we'll just grab the first one. Um, let's do it. I mean, technically, we could just do a fetch right here. We could also pull it into a separate file. We're just going to do it right here. Um, 
I don't even need to try catch if I'm using fetch. So we grab the response by awaiting a fetch to this URL. But instead of searching for Montana, we search for the location that they put in. Also trim any extra white space. Cool, so that makes the request. It's gonna come back. And really we'll, we'll do it if uh, response dot, um, okay. Because if it's not okay, then there was like a server error. Um, and if there was a server error, then you just don't get added to the map. Try again. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll, that that sounds like a good idea, Doc. Uh, so we can we can basically cache these. Actually, if we're gonna ca be caching these requests, then we should not do this here. We should we should uh, we'll put it elsewhere. But that way, elsewhere they can take care of the caching. So we can say like. Uh, Geolocate with the location, something like this. Um, and then this little function, geolocate, will handle um, caching and preventing us from making like multiple same requ same requests. Right? Right? I like that idea too, two lowercase. We'll do it. So uh, we're just going to create a separate file, geolocate.js. Um, and I'm going to make this a lowercase l, just so it matches up. So geolocate, that, that location. Um, this is going to export a function. It takes in a string. And then it does some of this. Um, but we need um, a cache. So we'll call this the like location cache. And that's just going to be a map um, where it will have the text location and map that to the latitude longitude that we get back. Um, cool. So, uh, and like somebody mentioned, we should actually. We should to lowercase the the location. Um, call this query, and that's what we're going to put in our cache. You can do that trick of storing promises in the map for deduplicating concurrent requests. All right, you're gonna have to remind me how that works because I recently did something like this in a, some code at work, and I didn't do it this way. I had like an array of promises and then I resolved all of them, but, um, okay. And really what we need to do is we'll say, uh, if the location cache dot, uh, has, um, a query and what's up, Raisu? <laughs> Notice me. Uh, if it has the query, then we just return it. Location cache um, at that query. Easy, right? If it doesn't have it, um, we're going to uh, put a promise in there? Is that what we do? You always return map.get. If it's not in there, you do a lookup, but instead of awaiting, you put that promise into the map. Yeah, I feel like we've written this before. Um, Okay, so I get I I got you. So we'll say location cache dot set this query, and then we want to we want a promise inside of there that will eventually resolve. Um, so really, I just kind of want to do that, and then I want to create my promise here. Async arrow function, but it's it's it would be an iffy. It would be an immediately executing async uh, arrow function. Like this. Right? Right? Okay, so make the request 
uh, if the response is okay, we get the results. We grab the first result, and then we grab dot lat and dot lawn. Something like that. Um, and if there is no result, then we just return null. Um, and on the other side, when we call this function, um, we will, um, if it returns null, we won't add it. Uh, you're right, yeah, so it's result.lon, but I'm gonna put it in a variable called longe, longe. <laughs> so lon maps to longe. Uh, and we're mapping this one. Um, yeah, somebody brought up a good point. Should we use encode URI component? Uh, uh, yeah, encode URI component. I think that makes sense. Um, um, yeah, you're right, Doc, but the only time that would fail is if this URL didn't resolve because technically we're um, even if it was a, an error response that's how we're handling it here so if it's an error response um, we're just returning null so we're not returning an unresolved promise or no, um, a not an unresolved promise a, a rejected promise we're just gonna assume that their API uh, is always working right should be fine um, and I like the idea of doing uh, encode URI component. So this, I mean, we're not in charge of this server here, but if this were our server, we would want to make sure that like our server wasn't vulnerable to certain types of injections um, if the if this wasn't encoded. But by encoding that, that'll prevent people from injecting more ampersands and stuff like that. So this should be fine. Yeah, we're making one big assumption. I mean, I guess it's not hard to not make an assumption here. We'll just try catch it. But let it be known that uh, if this fetch returns an error response, like a 500 status code, that actually doesn't throw an error. That um, we get back the response, but response.ok is false. In that case, we're just returning null. If, for whatever reason, the API is not reachable, we'll also just return null. Okay. Um, oh, I remember now though. That's why I need, I need to put this in a variable. Because the first time, <laughs> this is some, some interesting code, but, um, yeah. So if we've already started either looking up that given location or we already have it, we're just going to return it. If we haven't, we need to fire off a request, put it into the cache, and then we return that same promise. So that way, if someone else looks up the same location, it'll get the resolved promise. But eventually, this promise will resolve and we'll get the resolved value. And Melky Dev, what's up, friend? Welcome, Raiders. We're building a map. Um, we have just finished our location caching function. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Um, yeah, and shout out to ML Astro. They're a member of our uh, Live Coders team. What were you working on, Milky? Welcome, welcome. Um, but yes, we have a nice little caching geolocation function. Um, should, sorry, should just work. And then over here, we call it. So we need to import it. We'll get there. Nice. So import geolocate. We're going to call geolocate. That is actually going to give us back an object with a lat and a long, but it might not. It might give us back null. So it will say if result is not equal to null. Then we update it and location is the result. Right? 
Uh, you can no longer buy this shirt. Um, it was a it was a limited run. Um, I think eventually I'll have some more limited run T-shirts. You can get a T-shirt that just has the word code on it, not in green. Um, here. I wear this shirt sometimes. Oh, no. I need to update that command. This was the one. <laughs> You can you can go to my uh go to my store though. And there is a uh a shirt. Why can't I go to my store? This one. This is the one. That's the back of the shirt. That's the one that matters. <laughs> yeah, if you go to this link, it's undefined because that shirt isn't for sale anymore. Cool. Um they it's from Teespring. They ship to a lot of locations. So what extension do I use to bring that import instantly? That's actually just built into VS Code. Yeah, so you saw me typing that. I was like, import geolocate. Um, that's just built into to VS Code. It, it auto-detects that. Okay, uh, at this point, I think we can test it. So uh, location now has a lat and a long um, value. Um, I remember this position being reversed so this will be something like uh, check in dot location dot lat or long and lat can anyone tell me just by looking at this is this latitude longitude or longitude latitude I think it's longitude latitude what do you all think we also could look at the dots docs <laughs> All right, we've got one vote for long lat, one vote for lat long. Long lat? I think it's long lat. Let's look at the docs. Um, here, marker. Position, lat long expression. Mmm. I think it's long lat. We'd have to look at the uh, like the official leaflet docs. Controls. Marker. It says lat long expression. <laughs> But I think it's long lat. Yeah, that's why I'm saying this plexical, because I've had that experience before where it's, I mean, I always say latitude, longitude, but some libraries, for whatever reason, are reversed. Like, I think Mapbox is reversed. Okay. Doc Doc has it, because Doc, this is London, and Doc lives near there. So, it is latitude, longitude. We got it. We got it. Check in dot location dot latitude. Lat. Check in dot location dot longitude. Um, I do want to do some logging here. Uh, we'll also throw the user's name. Actually, we'll just throw all of the tags on here. Cool. All right. It should maybe work now. So if you would like to check in, you can do exclamation mark check dash in. Oh, we've got some errors. <laughs> uh, splice is not a function. Um, here. Yeah, you're right. Wait, are you? I want a substring. Slice. Yeah, you're right. It's slice. Okay. Let's try again. So exclamation mark check dash in, uh, followed by any location on the map. <laughs> it's working. 
<laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And then I need I need to fi- I need to fix this. Um, colon your message. It's great. Yeah. Now at at this point, all we need to do is uh... <laughs> look. I got rickrolled. <laughs> Four score and seven years ago. Ugh. Nice. Nice. It seems to be working, right? We can just assume that it's working. <laughs> we we need to um, uh, only show one message at a time, though. So let's get that working. There were some errors happening in the console. Let's let's just look at those. See if anything pops out. Um, can't access property slice message two is undefined. Well, I guess um, we'll just do this. Otherwise, there you just have no message. And then, if there is no message, we won't show the tooltip. Um, like that. Check in dot message. Okay. Um, at this point. Now we've got a we got a bunch of markers on the map, <laughs> um, but what we want is only one message should show up at a time. So we kind of need like a queuing system. Yeah, check in dot message. Yeah, so somebody is attempting to um, cross site script me. This is cool though. We can see there's somebody that I mean they say that they're in. Where is this? Uh, Baclar. Somebody's in France. <laughs> um, you got Portugal. Uh, Gadia? Where is that? It's, I guess Africa somewhere. Um, <laughs> I need I need a max width on the uh, on the uh, overlay thingy. Hey, what's up? Oh, did you apply? Oh, yeah. This actually, this brings up a great point. Um, I am teaching. Uh, <laughs> this is just, people are just spamming it. But I'm I'm teaching a course. I'm teaching a course of uh, in October. Okay, so I'm gonna. I'm here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna talk about this course right now. Um, but you should only apply for it if you live in Latin America or the Caribbean. So like this part of the world. If you live outside of that, you shouldn't apply because the grant is only to teach for people in this. It's not, no, it's not that uh, Zumba, Zumba man. It is uh, the grant that's specifically paying for it is sponsored by countries from that area. Actually, I think Canada might be okay. If you're in Canada, you can apply as well. Um, and I'll let you know whether or not you're allowed, but I, th- so it's, th- here's the thing. The course is, is, we have, we got a grant from Wiley, the, the young leaders of America's, of the America's initiative. Um, and this specifically is for helping people um, get jobs and network and stuff like that in the Americas. Yeah. No, no, Canada is not in Latin America, but, but I believe Wiley, the umbrella organization is um, for Canada, Latin America, and the Caribbean. I believe. I believe. All of that to say, if you live in that part of the world, um, where did the map go? Here. If you live in, in this general part of the world, you can apply, which is why I think somebody said, hopefully, teacher, because I think they applied to the course. Um, you all are about to hug this website. Reactforwebdevelopers.com. So here's the idea. The course is meant for people that don't know React yet, but you you do know web development. You know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, you do you have built websites before, but you haven't worked with React. That's the target of this course. If that's if if that's you and you live in Latin America, the Caribbean, or Canada, you can apply for this course. Um, it's going to the deadline is on uh, Wednesday, the twenty second. So you got to apply soon. Um, 
We're going to choose uh, 30 applicants on the 29th, and the first session is going to be on October 5th, and it's going to be a, a remote course. So it's all, yeah, it's going to be all done over Zoom through the month of October. So there's going to be uh, eight sessions during October. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Turkey is technically in Europe, though. But uh, if that, if you, if you fall into that category, and this is something you would like, you can go there and apply. But again, um, if you don't live in those areas, please don't apply because um, the grant isn't for people outside of that area. All right, that's a quick. That's a quick aside. <laughs> Uh, let's let's uh, let's fix this app. So now, instead of just showing all of these messages, uh, yeah, I think Tur Turkey's over here, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, here's the link. It's so it's uh, we got a pretty good domain, ReactForWebDevelopers.com. Um, cool. No, no, no. You can apply. Yeah, yeah. So if you are from one of those areas, I believe you can, like, we're in remote time. So if you're from one of those areas, but you live elsewhere in the world, you're welcome to apply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Balkans, Middle East, which is here-ish. It's so hard to tell with all these map messages on the map, but let's fix it. Let's fix this. So what we want is we only want to show one message at a time, and we'll show that message for, like, two or three seconds. And then uh, we'll show the next message. Uh, you're in Germany. I know where Germany is. I've lived in Germany before. There's the UK. There's France. Here's Germany. Uh, we also should probably put uh, your username next to your message. Um, but let's do it. So what I want... <laughs> there's... There's a lot of people here right now. I am. I. I always have not. I've not been. I have not claimed to be good at geography. Yeah. Um, okay. Here's what we want. We want some state for the currently visible check-in. So like the visible check-in ID. The visible check-in ID. And uh, that's just going to start off as an empty string. Um, so we're only going to, all, all the dots will start popping up on the map, but we only want to show one of the messages at a time. And then like two seconds later, we'll show the next one. And so like it'll, it'll bounce around. Um, and so what we want to do is... Um, Uh, as check-in changes, so we're gonna watch, we're gonna watch this array for changes. Anytime a new check-in comes in there, um, we'll set the what the visible check-in ID should be if one is not set yet. If that makes sense. So, um, how am I gonna do this? It's gonna be tricky. Uh, yeah, I can also reduce the font size. Yeah, that'll help a little bit, but. Oh, hey, uh, CSS is hot reloaded. Look at that. CSS is, I think, right? That changed the font size. But the React code is not hot reloaded. Yeah. Look at that. We also need, yeah, but we do need to set up the word wrap. You're right. Um, but I think for that, I need to just set a max width on this tooltip thingy. But I can't find, I need to find what the, the CSS class is for this, this specific tooltip. We're making a Twitch check-in map, is what we're doing. But right now, uh, things are a bit hectic. <laughs> well, I think 140 is fine if we just word wrap it, because then it's just like a taller one. Um, oh, can I actually pass in a class name? That'd be great. Yeah, if I could, um, where are we at? Right here. So on the uh, tool tip, yeah, I can pass in a class name. Cool. So we'll just pass in uh, the tool tip class. And then in our CSS, we'll tell the tooltip 
to have a max width of uh, 400 pixels. Let's see what that does. All right, you can try sending really long messages. Is it working? I can't tell. <laughs> what if I do 100 pixels? Yeah, it works. It works. Um, however, it um, it doesn't wrap and it doesn't increase the height. So that's unfortunate. Huh. I think we're going to go with 250s, 250, 250, 250 pixels, and then, um, actually, let's try this. So break, word break, break all. White space wrap. Word wrap. Break word. No, uh, I'm not. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to leave it at 250 pixels, and then um, the somebody sent the ellipses thing. How do I do that with CSS? Text overflow ellipses. Ellipsis, like that. Though even that isn't working. Hmm. <laughs> Marquee tag. <laughs> let's uh, let's do it. We'll get weird with it. Um, It's not showing anything at all. Um, oh, because I need to give it a width. 250 pixels. <laughs> okay. um, though when when the uh, yeah when the text is really small, um, it does that for whatever reason. The pop-up has more. I should look at that. Yeah, let's look at the actual pop-up um, in the leaflet docs. Oh, it has a max width and min width. I think we need to set it there, and then it, and then it will wrap without the need for any of this. So just directly on the component. So if we do 250 pixels there. Um, that should no pixels, just two fifty. Yeah, it's just a number. Okay. Oh, you're right. Um, we're on tooltip, not, what did I click on? This is pop-up, we need tooltip. Well. If we could get, so we tried using a pop-up earlier, if we could get the pop-up working, um, we just want it to always be open. Oh, here it is. Auto close. What if we try a pop up with auto close false? No. 
No. We have to click it. <laughs> we have to click it to see the message, which I don't want. What I really want is a pop-up that um, just stays open that you don't have to click on. Oh, well, um, we're just going to go back to what I had. So we're going to put it back as a tooltip. Um, we'll put that class back on it. And we'll bring these back. This is fine. I'm perfectly okay with this. Um, what we need now is to only show one at a time. <laughs> Watching me flip tables, is that what that is? <laughs> um, toggle pop-up? That could work. I said I was done with this, though. Um, yeah, because that would give us the ref... And then we could immediately call it when it gets created. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, what do you mean pin by IP address? Um, but let's try to get back to what I was doing before, which is we only want to show one at a time. Yeah, open on could work. I'm not going to worry about that, though, because we've we've wasted a bunch of time. Uh, pop up methods. And OK, I, it's fine. We're going to we're going to skip it, though, because um, there's a lot going on here. But um, what I want is to increase the current pop up ID. Um, every four or five seconds. How am I going to do that? Um, so I have this new state here, visible check-in ID. Um, I think I want a separate use effect. And, um... Yeah, I have permanent on the tooltip. The, the issue with the tooltip is the tooltip didn't have options for width and height, but the pop-up does. But the tooltip does have permanent, but the pop-up doesn't, which is why why we're, we're just not going to worry about that for now. Um, but yeah, we basically need like the, the one in the array. I guess I could just do the index in the array. But the, the thing that I'm thinking through right now and what I'm going to have trouble with is if I have a like a set timeout or even uh, actually, I mean, I could do a set time or even just like a set interval. So every five seconds increase. We could even just call this index. So increase the increase the index. Um, the issue is this use effect now has a dependency on check-ins because check-ins is the array of all the check-ins and we need to know how many of them are there are so that we can show the latest one but if i set a dependency on it um then this is going to rerun every time it changes which is why i wouldn't want set interval i would want like set timeout Let's think through this. So this use effect is going to be dependent on the check-ins array because if it ever changes, we need to know the, the size of it and all that good stuff. I think it's going to help us to not use the ID and just do um, use the index. Because if we use the index, um, 
Then we don't have to worry about the values inside of the array. Um, but then I can do something like this. So, um, let's say I'll have a, a function set or set current, and inside of here I'll say uh, if the visible the current visible check-in index. Um, is less than the length of the check-ins, minus one, uh, then we're going to set it to be the next one. Great. Uh, Doc is saying, what if I continually cycle through the whole array calling toggle pop up on each one. So that way it just pops pops up each one. But I want I want pauses between it. And the array itself is changing. Let's take a quick stretch by the way. This is my break timer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really funny that you say that, Zamar. Watching React programming for entertainment purposes after a day of working. I think that's the thing. I code so you don't have to, at least right now. This is, it should be somewhat entertaining. Um, you might also be learning something. Um, okay. This is going to cycle through the array. So this is going to set it to the next one, and then we just need to keep calling it. So we could do something like um, set timeout with that function and call it in two seconds. And then we actually need to return. So this, this is the tricky part. With a use effect, if your dependencies change, this function is going to rerun. And so when it reruns, we actually need to uh, clear that timeout. Um, do we, though? I don't know. Um, we need to work on this code. I don't know if it's going to work, but now that we have the visible check-in index, we can use that here. So we only show the tooltip if the visible check-in index is equal to the index in the map of all the messages. So um, if there is a message and the visible check-in index is equal to this index, then show the tooltip. Um, so, and actually we can start off at zero. So we'll start off at zero and then two seconds from now, it'll attempt to set it to one. But the issue is these two values are going to change. So it's actually just going to clear the timeout and it's never going to run. This is why React hooks are tricky. I don't know, like, anybody out there that's familiar with React hooks, can you think through this better than I? <laughs> because, like, I know this this isn't going to work um, because the dependencies are going to immediately change and it's going to immediately clear that timeout. Um, actually, I don't need to clear the timeout. I would just need to clear it if it was an interval because the timeout only happens once. Yeah, that could work, Osama, um, where the actual things that I'm pushing into the check-in array have some information about like when or if they've been displayed. But let's just see if this, this works. Will this memory leak, though? I mean, it's just going to call the function in two seconds. 
any time. Well, no, it's going to call it any time the check-ins change. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that, though. Actually, got a better idea. What if it has no dependencies? What if it has no dependencies, so it only runs once, um, and we just keep increasing? This this is this will do it. I've got it. I got it. We just keep increasing. So we do a uh, we have a function called uh, set index. And this just does set visible check in index with the previous value um, plus one. And then we'll set it again in um, three seconds. So this. This is easy, right? It has this has no dependencies, means meaning this is only going to run once when the component mounts, um, and then we're basically just going to be increasing the index by one every three seconds. Easy. Now, now, um, we can use the index with mod <laughs> um, to see if it's the right one. So how would that work? This would be. Um, Visible check-in index mod the length of check-ins. What just happened there? Um, yeah. Uh, check-ins dot length, or is it length mod the check-in? But basically, this number can go bigger than the length of the array, but mod will wrap it back around. This, this is the simplest solution, but do I have this? Yeah, it's index mod the length. Okay, this is it. Um, yeah, if no messages are sent, that's fine. This is just going to be increasing behind the scenes. Um, and then eventually when one message is sent, mod will set it back to one. I want math. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, because initially check-ins dot length is zero, and then we would be dividing by zero. Yeah, and we're using a marquee tag. All right, this is it. This is this is the winner. That's the one. So now, when you, uh, for those of you that are just joining us, here's the command that you can run. You can do exclamation mark check-in, followed by some location in the world. It could be anywhere followed by a colon. The colon is important so we can differentiate between your location and then your message. And then they will just appear on the map. Every three seconds, it's going to jump and show us a different message. Viva Mexico! <laughs> uh. Portugal. Great. Hello. Hi, Mom. I'm in a stream. It's France. Dude, please send a helicopter. <laughs> All right, so I think three seconds is not long enough. Um, let's go with five and a half seconds. Let's see what we get. All right, try again. It's cold outside. Look, they're in Alaska. Hello. Hi, dude. Please be fast. Here it is cold. <laughs> Hi, CJ. Hello. I'm hungry in Hungary. Oh, wait, I think... Oh, okay. I thought it was over here, but yeah, that should be hungry. MemeGenerator.net. <laughs> cool. Uh, I'm going to increase the font size. Um... 1.5. Stagger them a bit so a couple are visible. What do you mean by that? So like multiple, like, see, that's that's what would get really tricky. Is if I want to show multiple messages at the same time, I would need to do some maths 
to make sure that if I were to show a message box, would it not collide with other message boxes that are showing? Um, and uh, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> so, I think this is fine. Here's the idea, though. I can take this and like put it as an overlay. Give me one second. I'll show you how, how it would work. Um, we'll go over here. We'll add a uh, browser overlay. Um, it's not working. This is my IP address. Okay, so this is another thing that uh, Vite is doing that uh, other things will do by default. It's only listening on localhost. It's not listening on my my local IP address. Um, I need to look up the Vite options for this. Um, has the option in the console? Use hosts to expose. Cool. Nice. Okay. Um, so now, now, it's also not working. Yeah, we're using React. Wait, is it trying to do HTTPS? Okay. Uh, I hired somebody to make this. Uh, she dot moe. I, I commissioned the, the the pixel art from them. Okay, this is just like another reason why I wouldn't use V because I can't get it. I can't get it to show up. This is aggravating. <laughs> Oh, uh, because technically it works here, but then it's not letting me load it on the other side. Um, oh, that that could be an issue because that's loading over HTTPS versus HTTP. But uh, browser, my browser, like OBS, doesn't usually care about that. Yeah, I, I have a real dog. Uh, do, if you do exclamation mark uh, Panzer in the chat, you can see a a video of him. Um. I should write down all the reasons I don't use these things. <laughs> like, like the first time we tried to use Vite, it was something, there, there was some issue. Now we don't get hot reloading and there's, well, for whatever reason, I can't access it outside of here. Is HTTPS true by default? Yeah, I mean, something like Ingrok could work, but here's the thing. When you're looking at this page right here, um, there are like four to five different, like there's like six or seven different browser overlays, and I didn't have to do anything special to get them working. So like the chat, that's a browser overlay. 
Uh, the video playing with like the messages and the links, that's a browser overlay. The drop game is a browser overlay. The number of followers is a browser overlay. All of those are just running on my local machine at a 10.0.0.104 address, and they work just fine. Um, so I don't know what they're doing to make this not work. Yeah, so the purpose of Vite was our our, mod, our project and module bundler and um, like dev server. So if we weren't using Vite, we would have used something like Create React App, and Create React App um, is using Webpack behind the scenes. So you could think of Vite as a replacement for for Webpack. And these days, when you're when you're writing React apps, you uh, typically behind the scenes, it's using Webpack to take all of your React stuff and bundle it into individual assets. And that's similar to what Vite is doing, but it's using a thing called ESBuild, um, which is an extremely fast JavaScript compiler. Uh, but there are just other issues. Doesn't matter, I'm not, I'm not even gonna worry about it. But if it, the idea is eventually, I'll be able to take this little page that I built and make it an overlay like this. So in, instead of displaying me next to the computer, I'll show the map. And so like when the stream is getting started, um, people can check in and you'll see the map popping up all over the place. Um, all right, what else do we need to add before we're done? Close all this extra stuff for now. Earth. <laughs> what? Come on. Uh, clusters on the map. I don't know if uh, if Leaflet supports clusters though. I can look into it. It's cold over here. Oh, I know one thing I want to do. Instead of showing the coding garden logo, I want to show your your Twitch avatar, Twitch icon. That's what I want to do. Okay, for that, we're going to have to call the Twitch API. Yeah, I'll, I'll put the source code on GitHub uh, when the stream is over. Is this a built-in or is it a separate library? Provides beautiful animated marker clustering. Cool. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> gonna, because eventually, instead of showing this, you're going to see the user's icon. So that's what we'll do. Um, all right. Um, can I still use the old API? Because then I don't have to specify uh, a token. Um, yeah, I could dock, but I, I want this code to be usable by others. So they don't have to get my API going. So I, I'm just going to use. Sorry, I'm just going to use this one. Um, get user by ID. This is what I want. So I'm going to call the Twitch API, and then that's going to give me back uh, info about the user, including like their avatar, which I think is logo. Right, right. Should be fine. Um, I guess the other thing we didn't do is we didn't stop a user from checking in more than once. Um, so we should probably do that. Um, something like this. Existing check-ins uh, is just a set, and it's going to have the user's ID inside of it. And then... When we add them here, we're going to um, set it at their user ID. Um, to be true. So that means they've already checked in. And then um, before we do this, let's just put this in a variable. Uh, 
um, and we'll check it before we let them do it. So if they did check in, and existing check-ins does not have their user ID, does not have like that. Um, I just need to confirm. I think this is how you grab the user ID from the message, user dash ID in the tags. Um, but we can see, yeah, this because that's our Twitch ID. Um, about my keyboard. If you just do exclamation mark keyboard, you can get a link to it. But it's technically built for Windows. It's I don't do anything special to make it for a Mac. Um, I guess I'll show you. Oh, I just unplugged it. <laughs> but uh, here's the Windows key. Here. And then the control. So, yeah, I don't have any custom layout for it to use it on a Mac. I just use it as is. Oh, you're right, Doc. Uh, whenever uh, a message or user is timed out or a message is deleted, I should probably delete it from here as well. Check existing checkins.set is not a function. You're right. Is it dot add? Yeah, add. Oh. And then I don't need true, I just have the user ID. Cool, 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 cool. All right, I need a to-do. Uh, remove messages on mod events. We'll do that eventually. Um, now I want to call the Twitch API. So this is the endpoint I want to hit. I will need to get a client ID. I think I might have one that I can use. Um, but whenever a user checks in, like right here, at this point is where I'll call the, the Twitch API. So I'll, I'll say like uh, Twitch user, get Twitch user with um, their user ID. And so I'll create a function, get Twitch user, um, that does like caching and lookups and stuff like that. So just like we had that geo locate function, we'll have that here. Um, this takes in the user ID. This is going to be an async function. Um, we're going to try catch it. And we'll call this URL. Here. Well, the, the logo is technically the avatar, I believe. You get all that info. Oh, you're right. You're meaning like in TMI? Yeah, for, for whatever reason. Um, well, that didn't work. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's the one. It's just their example, but I think that's the one we want. But yeah, for whatever reason, um, in the, the IRC Twitch interface, you don't get like user profile information. Did I add an extra slash? No. I think that is just an old one that doesn't exist anymore. Filter out crazy Unicode? Will that get rid of uh, emojis, though? We'll get there. Here. <laughs> so I want to call this... API endpoint, uh, but I want to pass in the specific user ID. Um, that's going to give me back some JSON. And then uh, we should be able to just return the response, which is going to be this. So actually just this. Uh, and if for whatever reason there was an error, we're just going to return null. Um, so that way on the other side, uh, when we call it right here, if Twitch user is null, then um, we just won't use it. So here we'll have like avatar. And if Twitch user is not null, then we'll use their logo. Otherwise, don't specify one. And then um, actually, I need to make it an icon. I need to make it an icon. It needs to be this. 
We'll call this, so this is the default icon. Uh, and if we couldn't get their avatar URL for some reason, we're going to use this one, which is the coding garden one. Um, but if we did get their image URL, we need to create a new instance and then pass that in. Um, so, and we'll call this icon. So if Twitch user is a thing, we're going to create an instance of a leaflet icon and pass in the Twitch user logo. Um, otherwise, we're going to use the default icon like that. And then now down below in the render function, um, right here, we'll do check in dot icon. Okay. So uh, this is going to fail for now because we don't have, um, actually, let me do this. Uh, if the response was okay, do this. Otherwise, return null. Because right now, this is going to fail because I don't have a, a client ID for their API. Um, there's also some other headers that I need to set. Oh, cool. Uh, get, oh, there, that's another issue. <laughs> so I have this function here, but how are we going to call it over here? Right here, we need to actually bring it in. So just like we imported geolocate, we can import that. And then I should see some API errors. Wait, did they remove cores from their API? They used to allow it. Um, regardless, we, there are some things we need to do. So, uh, we need this accept header and then we also need to set the client ID. So we're going to specify some headers. We got this like that. And then, uh, client ID, and then I need to go grab a client ID. All right, give me just a second. I have one somewhere. What's up, Sai? Can we get a shout out for Sai? Uh, I think it worked. <laughs> I think it worked. You all can try checking in now. Let me just make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's work. It's definitely working. Um I'm curious why. Oh, because everyone's in Europe. That's why I was like, what's happening? They're just bouncing around. Um, yeah, okay. So I, I'm going to, I have an idea for making it look, look nicer. Uh, we're going to zoom in. And then anytime we, anytime we change the current one, uh, we're going to pan the map over to it. So like, it'll stay... It'll stay zoomed in at about this level, but then any time it changes, it'll automatically pan. It'll be easier to read the stuff like that. Yeah, let's let's make the icons smaller and round. We'll give them a radius. Um, I got nervous for a second. 
uh, you can you're allowed to see that client ID. That's okay. <laughs> um, uh, how are we gonna do that? Because technically, the icon is set on the marker. Can I give it a class? Let's look at the um, React leaflet. Get the API, the components. We have a marker. And then marker uses a uh, an icon. This thing. And then icon can have a class name. That's what we wanted. So class name icon, I guess. <laughs> Let me take a quick stretch. Um, yeah, so class name uh, icon, and then we can give that class name a border radius in our CSS. Is that how that works? 50%? 100%? Oh. Just 50%, because then it's 50% all around. Cool. Um, so that looks a lot nicer. I like that. Hungry. <laughs> uh, now let's start panning the map around. Um, this looks like fun. Yo. <laughs> um, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, because if you do it on a rectangle, then it has rounded edges, right? And it doesn't make it a circle. These are a lot. Yeah, this is great. All right. Last thing before I go is I wanna I wanna I wanna make this nicer. So I want it so that it's zoomed in at like this level all the time. And then it pans like this, pans to a specific latitude, longitude, or wherever it is, um, um whichever one it's showing. Um does React Leafly have anything? But I think this is likely what we need, but we will have to get a a reference to the map instance. Um, animated panning. We're using a uh, leaflet in React Leaflet. Um, let's see what this is doing though. So set view on click. Saying use map event. Okay. Yeah, I don't plan on uh, clustering them. I think we could do that eventually. But I think right now, like because the location can be um, more fine grained, um, when you're this zoomed in, they don't really overlap that much, which I think is totally fine. We don't really need to cluster them at this point. <laughs> Are you saying dark mode in the docs? Oh, that? Nice. Um, I think if, we might need to look at the map container. Um, cool. So when created, we can pass it a callback. That gives us the map itself. Um, <laughs> You're welcome, everyone. You're welcome for the for the dark mode. So um, map container accepts a uh, when created callback. We can create ours here. Um, and actually, I think really all I want is just a state variable with my map on it. So we can have like uh, this. It usually it, it initially starts off as null. So we start off with 
uh, no map. And then whenever the map is created, it'll call this callback for us and set the map variable behind the scenes. Um, and then um, now each time we set the visible check-in index, we want to animate the map. Which is going to be tricky because we actually do want access to um, that specific latitude longitude. How about we do this? I have a separate use effect that is dependent on the check-ins. and the uh, visible check-in index. And um, whenever the visible check-in index changes, we'll grab the specific one from check-ins and then use that latitude longitude. Um, so the check-in is going to be check-ins at that visible check-in index. So that'll give us the object that has Latin launch. And then we can do, well, actually, I guess we need the map as well. Um, so we can say if check-in is a thing and map is a thing, we'll say uh, map dot set view. Here we go. Um, the center is going to be uh, the check-in dot location dot lat and check-in dot location. What's up, Alka? <laughs> uh, dot long. Um, we need the zoom level, which, what's the current zoom level? Two? We'll go like four? Visible chicken. <laughs> all right, this should work. All right, this is it. This is the, the uh, this is what we've all, this is what we all came here for. Let's see if it works. Oh, it's working. <laughs> Look at that. Hello from Imatra. Hola, bro. <laughs> Radioactive. Radioactive. This is pretty good. I'm I'm proud of this. All right, so anybody else that wants to check in, uh, you can see people doing it in the chat, but it's exclamation mark check in, followed by, or exclamation mark check dash in, followed by your location, which could be anywhere in the world. We'll, we, we try to figure out where that is. Uh, colon, the colon is important, and then whatever your message is, and it'll show up on the map. Search Gardai. Oh, is that the country you're in? <laughs> I guess, yeah, there are it looks like there are... Um, oh, the command is check dash in. Yeah, there's a dash in it. Can't get Denver to work? Hmm. Is there already somebody in Denver? Let me see what you tried. That should work. No, that should work. I'm gonna. Nobody is showing up. <laughs> let me let me pass it into the API and see what it gives back. Um, Oh, it's coming back with Denver, Columbia. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I wonder why that's the first result. <laughs> yeah, I think if you do just Denver, um, yeah, that one picks Denver, Colorado. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah. So if you're in the U.S., don't abbreviate your state. Um, well done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Hi from the UK. I'm going to increase the zoom a little bit. Um, here, we're doing zoom level four, going to five. All right, we're starting over. This is the final one, and then I'm going to go. Oh, we missed. Oh, it, it switched too soon. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Someone said this is what awesome or this is um Oh there's too many. I think I missed it. We'll have to read them one at a time. I live here. Hey. Hi. Better call Saul. <laughs> I actually started watching that again. I had stopped watching it at one point. Three people struggle with math. Hello. Guten Tag. <laughs> um, there's, a, there's a movie that uh, the guy from Better Call Saul was in. Recently came out. What's it called? I'm late. Oh, what's up? Uh, I'll remember your name. <laughs> I remember your icon. Uh, does anybody know what movie I'm talking about? Hola. Nobody. Yeah, it's called Nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so it's like um and, and Bob Odenkirk is is the guy's name. Um but it's like if oh, where are you? <laughs> in the middle of nowhere? Oh, you're in uh whatever the one is on top of the planet. That's not Antarctica, is it? I never said I was good at geography. But yeah, if you if you're looking for a interesting movie to watch, check out Nobody, but it's like if a famous actor writer always wanted to be in an action movie, but like never was. And then he like wrote and directed this movie and it's just like the ultimate action movie. Uh, it's, and it's, it's like a comedy action movie. I don't know. Yeah. It definitely had a slow start. It definitely did. But once it takes off, it was kind of insane. Lonely in South Europe. Oh, there's a few. Who's this? This is cool. <laughs> it's Carlton. Carlton is uh, off near New Zealand. Let's go. Oh, nice. Brock and Geo, dude. Deliberate. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's interesting. Anybody that checks in... Um, without a um, message. It just goes to them, but then it doesn't show the message box. So I think what we could do is add like an active class so that whenever the avatar goes active, it has like maybe like a yellow ring around it and also increase the Z index. But one more for luck. More chat things to confuse newcomers. <laughs> when there are two people in, yeah, so that's that's what I wanted to do. Forget about it. Uh, the like the Z index because then I, whichever one is active, I increase the Z index and it'll pop up on top of it. Bonjour. <laughs> Maritimer, old timer. <laughs> oh, um, I I tried to just do an npm install. So I'm answering Alka's question. I tried to do an npm install of TMI in a React app, and it wanted stream to exist, and then like some other thing. So I ended up just pulling down the browser build. I don't know if if there's a way to npm install it in a React app and get it to use the browser version. What's GunJS? Oh, uh, you, I mean, you don't even have to check in. Um, but yeah, your, your messages will show up anyways. Um, 
but checking in gets gets it on the map here, which is pretty fun. <laughs> West Coast, best coast. Um, yeah, I'm I'm on the life coders team. I am, yeah. Run the build script and use the browser. Yeah, that, that's what I figured, but I ended up just downloading the pre-built version. Oh, it's GunJS. It's a really simple way to make distributed database across users decentralized. Oh, I saw that video and purposefully skipped it because <laughs> it's about... Um, crypto stuff, right? It's like a decentralized file system. Um, I don't know. I'll look into it. I'll look into it. Yeah, there's a ton of people in Europe. I can't, I can't zoom out because it keeps zooming in, but it's like the majority of people in Europe. We got some people here in the US, but then uh, a lot of people in Europe. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I really ap appreciate it. Um, yeah. How do you appear there? Um, actually, I should put a message. I need to put a message on the map. I'm just waiting it for, for it to get back around because I think this person, was that person the first person to check in? I think somebody over here was the first person to check in, but it just like immediately skipped them. Hmm. Oh, uh... Sincolo, Sincolo Dev, the extension that shows the code executing in VS Code is called Quaka, Quaka JS, uh, Q U O K K A uh, dot JS. This. Hello. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess last thing is I'll add a little div that describes how this. Actually, I kind of want to do. Um, I kind of want the active one to have a, uh, like a, like nice yellow border around it. <laughs> Lucien, are you okay over there? That's funny. Alka's in Houston, Texas. The order won't be, yeah, it's, it's true because if somebody new checks in, then it's back around at the beginning and it's not going to get to them until it's gotten through everybody else. You're right, doc. We'll have to think through that. Honestly, I think to, um, uh, fix that is to <laughs> not use react. Like there, there's a way to do it. It's just trying to logic through, uh, how to use hooks the right way without having them run over and over again is tricky to think about. Um, that's why I have multiple multiple hooks here because like I could have potentially done this set view logic inside of here, but then if I did that, this effect would rerun every time check-ins changed and I didn't want it to do that because I only wanted it to set the next one every 5,500 milliseconds, but if it reran because dependencies changed then it would run more often than that. Um, so... Yeah, um, actually, I am. I am going to call it there. But there are some. There are some good to dos that we have um, that will be good to add. We're done with all. We don't. We we at least got the basics done. We have a map. We can check in. We can do geolocation, and we put markers on the map. Uh, but to do, uh, remove messages on mod events. Yeah, because somebody might do a check-in with a, a naughty word, or maybe they have a naughty profile picture set. If the mod bans or times them out, we need to remove them. Um, we need uh, an overlay with uh, the check-in command explained. Um, what else do we need? Oh, we need to uh, bring the active user icon to the front. Highlight icon. Yeah, you're welcome, DS Legends. Andreas. I just remembered the person's name. Andreas. They, <laughs> they were like, they were one of the first persons to check in. I was like, what's your name? That's Andreas, isn't it? Are you here, Andreas? Is that you? Maybe it's not. 
Maybe it's not. Maybe you just look the same as somebody else. Um, are there anything else we wanted to do? Oh, pause. Yeah, pause would be good. But the, I think the main idea, though, is this would never actually be running on my screen. It would always be running as an overlay, like uh, when the stream is starting. Um, but it would be if I'm showing it on my screen, it would be good to uh, to pause it. Yeah. Another interesting idea here is like not only just uh, not only check in messages, but like what if every single uh, chat message uh, appeared next to the user here? Feeling lonely in South Europe. Uh, oh yeah, and that's the other thing is like we're not showing the user's name. We'll do that. Uh, show user name. Um, we need like a pause button. Um, I guess like, do you, what do you mean by expire? I was thinking you could remove them from the map after like a certain amount of time, but yeah. I like that idea. Pause on map move. What if you're not from planet Earth? Um, then this app is not for you. <laughs> it's not panning anymore for some reason. Let's see if we got any errors in the console. Oh, we did. Encountered two children with the same key. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> um that should have been caught. I don't know, Alka, you, you tell me. So um in the ID property of tags from TMI, that's the ID of the message, right? That should be completely and totally unique. Or is that some other ID that I don't know about? Because if two IDs are the same, then that means the same message got added twice? Don't give children's keys. That's dangerous. Well, in React, you have to give the child's keys. It is a UU ID, but I thought that was like the unique ID of the message, like from the Twitch API. Hmm. Oh, well. Uh I think that's it. That's most of our to-dos. We'll <laughs> at least we've written them down. We'll get to them maybe eventually. All right, I'm gonna head out. I need to eat lunch because I never ate lunch, and I uh, I need to clean my house. I've got visitors coming this weekend. I've got things to do. Um, but I appreciate you all. Thanks for hanging out. Um, I'll give one one last quick rundown of the code, um, and then I'll go. ID is the message ID. Maybe something happened to cause it. It's possible, but the thing is. This would only get called once with the message ID. Yeah, I guess we could technically do that, Doc. <laughs> well, no, you forgot to put Kappa because it could return math.random could return the um, uh, the same <laughs> the same value twice. Uh, okay, so quick, like the quickest rundown possible of this app. We decided to use a thing called Vite, V I T E, which is a uh, a a project builder and bundler built on top of ES build. We ran into a few snags. It's not refreshing our React code for some reason. Um, and then like, I can't access it on this same network with that port for whatever reason, but regardless, we're using Vite. At the end of the day, we can just look here. It's bringing in our main file. Um, we're bringing in TMI, which is the library we use to talk to Twitch chat. And then if we look at main, that's our entry point. That has, that's just like mounting our React app, but we are bringing in CSS from Leaflet in our own custom CSS. Uh, Leaflet is a library that lets you add maps to JavaScript apps. Um, it's made for like vanilla JavaScript stuff. Uh, what we used was a, was a library called React Leaflet, uh, which is a wrapper on top of that to make it 
uh, easily integrate with uh, React, which is what we're building this thing with. So leaflets, the library, and then we're using this. But what's nice about it is it gives you things like map container, tile layer, map marker, pop-up, tooltip, and then we can use those components inside of our React app. Uh, yeah, and that is true. Uh, Vite was made by the creator of Vue. Um, and then if we look at our app component, that's where all of our codes are. Um, let's zoom out just a little bit. Um, so we're bringing in, like I mentioned, all those components from Leaflet. We're bringing in uh, TMI, which I didn't talk about. That is a library for talking to Twitch chat, TMI.js, uh, maintained by Alka, who's in the chat. Um, but you just say what what channel you want to listen for messages, and then you can instantly listen for messages, which is nice. So we create a client, um, and then our app has a few state variables. So we have a state variable that corresponds to the map itself, and so that's why we that way we can call methods on it to pan and zoom around the map. Uh, we're keeping track of which is the currently visible check-in. So you saw as the map was panning around, that's where we're keeping track of that. Anytime we change that, it's going to change and then move. Um, and then check-ins is just the whole array of everybody that has has checked in. Um, when the app starts up, we start listening for messages. Um, right now, we have some pretty simple logic that's like every five seconds, just change the currently visible one. So that's why it starts cycling through. And then uh, we have this effect here that says any time that visible check-in value changes, pan the map to pan over to where that check-in is. Um, and then the component itself is pretty simple. You have the map, uh, you have the tile layer, and then we have that array of check-ins um, on our state that we, we map over it. And for every single one, we have a marker component with all of the information. Um, and then the one thing I skipped was like the bulk of the code where basically any time a message is sent, there are multiple things we have to do. Uh, first of all, we need to make sure that the message starts with check-in. We need to make sure that that user hasn't checked in before. Uh, we then need to take the part of their message that is the location and turn it into latitude longitude. So we did that with our geolocate method. Um, and this uh, takes in like Denver, Colorado, the string. Uh, make sure that we haven't looked up that location before. If we have, we just return it from the cache. But if we haven't, we're calling these this uh, nominatim API from OpenStreetMaps, Street which is a free geolocation API. But as we've seen, it's not always the best. Like we tried to geolocate Denver CO and it came back with Denver Columbia instead of Denver Colorado, but that's fine. So we call that API. That API gives us back latitude longitude and that's then the thing we use to uh, put it on the map. So we have that latitude longitude. We also are showing the, the user icons. Uh, like this. And so to get those icons, we need to call the Twitch API. So we also do that. So we say get Twitch user. That just calls the Twitch API, gets back info that includes their UR, uh, icon URL. And then we create the check-in. So it has a unique ID. At least we thought it did. Um, it has the latitude longitude. It has their specific message. It has uh, an icon, which is either the default icon if we couldn't find their Twitch user for some reason, or we create an icon using their logo from the Twitch API, and then we put it into the array. And that's it, that's our app. <laughs> um, yeah, so the API, actually I'm, I am gonna push this to GitHub, so just watch the, um, if you go to github.com slash coding garden, um, very soon I'm gonna push up a repo and all of that code that I just showed you will be there, so you can take a look at it. Uh, but the API is called nom nom nomatat nominatim nom nominatim nominatim. I don't know. I'm gonna go. <laughs> you all are awesome. I appreciate you. Uh, we're gonna do a raid. Um, here, if you're a subscriber, you can use this ra raid message. Oh, you're very welcome, uh, Janek. Thanks for hanging out. If you're not a sub. You can use this raid message. You can also come up with your own raid message. Be creative. Um, and I don't know who we're gonna raid, but whoever we do, uh, show them lots of love, drop a follow if you like what they're doing. I appreciate you all for hanging out. There were a lot of you today and I really appreciate it. You asked good questions. Um, you provided good input. You checked in on the map that we created. <laughs> um, so we had a good time. Uh, next stream is planned for next Friday. So a week from now. Mm, and see you later, Andreas. <laughs>
I remembered your name too. You're the, you were the one that checked in and I couldn't think of your name for some reason. Uh, but we'll see you. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, yeah. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this. I'm back. I realize I'm just not leaving. But there were a ton of supports that I actually forgot to acknowledge. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, call those out. Um, at least I think there were. Yeah, so there was Peer with the Prime Sub, Tyler with the Prime Sub, Sledge Dog with the 16-month resub, Kylo with the 10 bits, um, Krillian with the 100 bits, Fiedin with the 5 months, Eddie with the 6 months, Big San with the sub, uh, uh, Rublev with the sub. Uh, yeah, if you all left then uh the quickest week ever <laughs> and i'm sorry i didn't acknowledge you but i appreciate you uh yeah we'll see you next time Looks like we had a follow bot, but we didn't even notice them. So that's nice. <laughs>to head over to Seth Drums. Uh, be sure to use all of your emotes, including like Cat Jam and stuff like that. Um, he plays the drums, and it's going to be a fun time. So use all the emotes you can, and uh, I appreciate you. We'll see you over there.